Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Micah. This is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Tonight, we are very off-road. Oh, yeah. Like the traditional sense, and then we'll get into an alternative definition of it as well. <laughs> uh, as always, we're socially distanced. It's the only way we can do the show. Ross is in the Northeast. I'm in the Midwest. And we're back to our full spectrum of the U.S. because Mike is on the West Coast. Coast to coast. Where, where exactly are you guys? Because I'm unfamiliar with your locales. <laughs> I'm in Stanford, Connecticut. Oh, wow. I got married in Connecticut. Where? In a town called Avon. Avon. I know that place, but I don't know why. Where is Hold that? up. Hold up. You have to know like every Google town in Connecticut. It's like all of 12 minutes to get across the state. <laughs> oh, Are you telling me you don't know all about the think. nutmeg states? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> you Wait, wish what, it was 12 minutes. What oh, state okay. is it? The nutmeg state? The, the nutmeg, nutmeg yeah, state. That's what the Miata Club is called. It's the Nutmeg Miata Club. Homie. And, okay. and we have a lot of old white people that like to call each other nutmeggers. Dude, I thought we Ooh, were lame I, with the sunflower state. Like, yeah, no, I don't know. I feel like nutmeg is much lamer, especially if we're <laughs> calling each other that. That exactly. feels like can uh, confirm. I'm uncomfortable with the nutmegger moniker. Let's <laughs> yeah. let's just move on. E- yes, ER please. on that is <laughs> super awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll jump straight yeah. into the news because it's super exciting and also kind of awkward is the way I would term it. The Volkswagen? Yeah, it's where I was going. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. forgot to warn Mike I share the screen so I don't have to edit photos later. Nice. <laughs> nice visual references. Yeah, no, the rumor this week is that Volkswagen will be resurrecting the Scout nameplate. Hmm. Not yeah. Ford. Not Nash. Ford. International, but Volkswagen. Not and Freightliner who owned it. Volkswagen just showed up and bought it, right? So, well, ru- yeah, that's how it got to be. But rumor has it it's going to be all electric. And it kind of just looks like a Telluride in these sketches. Um, it could be cool. I get I, Rivian I vibes from it. That too. That too, yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it's they don't have this gap filled. So that's how they're going to fill it. And awesome. Very rarely. The, as long as the interfaces are better, right. fine. You mean the haptic window buttons and those things like that in the ID4? Is that what we're talking about? And the, well, every other car now, the GTI. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, I will say this is one of the first times in a while we've said this on the show is like, go read Zach Bowman's article on Jalopnik about the Scout. It mm-hmm. home, like, he's always had a way with words, but like, international for him means more than than it does for some people uh yeah. i think he has a lot of life experiences with international and, and dude spoke from the heart when he wrote his piece today it was it was a little more uh you gotta zach always does that he does a great job of evo- evoking emotion when he's ready so i'm never all that hung up by like um you know oh, this company owns this piece of uh intellectual property and so it's like i don't get really offended by like proper lineage but i don't really have a connection with the brand i'm really um, intrigued by what they could do but being volkswagen i suspect they'll screw it up is that not about right <laughs> there's yes, a that's... fair chance uh, <laughs> I, it's like i kind yeah. of want to believe and I, I don't mind the idea of having uh, another electrified off-roader i mean honestly i've been uh, driving a lot of vehicles recently that um you know bring electrification to um you know the off-road environment Mo- most recently the uh, f-150 lightning yes. um which i can't actually speak no no, no the you can. i can't speak about yeah it. that was yesterday <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like uh like yeah. that immediate electric torque makes so much sense in an off-road environment um mm-hmm. removing engine noise kind of uh, connects you with nature audibly in a way that uh, engines sometimes separate you there there is some reason there are some reasons to do it um so this could be cool but you know again vw so mm. <laughs> will they i love that that's the, that's the attitude <laughs> no i, I mean, want to believe prove right. me wrong volkswagen believe. prove me wrong <laughs> and it, yeah well, we'll see you're right like i uh, even with it like looking I, I see a lot of Rivian in it like I'm okay if there's another one that looks similar to there like let's have some fun let's do mm-hmm. some I might I might have also taken my daily commute from 20 miles to 72 miles and have been like browsing used plug-in hybrids so <laughs> hard mm-hmm. so another EV I was kind of like all right sweet but like isn't the kind of EV stance you should lease first because we still don't know yes. about how the old Absolutely. like it's not really lowering my finances. Like I'm just mm-hmm. going to stay with my suburban and so out. 
I think this thing at least will make sense if it doesn't cost as much as some of the other electric off-roaders. You know, the the Rivians are crazy expensive. The Hummer is like a freaking house payment. I, but, I would say the Rivians are expensive, but I, I think the Hummer is exorbitant. Like, oh, yeah. that's six figures. So, like, the Rivian. Six. It, now and my day job lives in vehicles that are now in that higher price range there so like so like when i yeah, look at the rivian that. price tag i'm like that's super cheap because the, i'm staring down average builds at 105 to 125k so like all about relativity yeah exactly look even mike because i showed up there. <laughs> i feel like i need to know more about what you guys are into are you like <laughs> moving products is this one of those things we need to have an <laughs> offline conversation about no no we, we can talk about i frequently yeah i'll frequently a helicopter <laughs> black duffel bags uh none <laughs> there are a lot of ford transit seats sitting around i haven't gone through them all but like you haven't knifed them open no because we still put them in the van so but no my guy we're getting an adventure van company and so there's that makes of, all the sense in the world it's all yeah, coming together exactly. okay cool yeah. <laughs> covert ops yeah which yeah, five thousand kilos of adventure vans loud yes. and clear <laughs> <laughs> Now I know why you let Jeff uh, work for you. <laughs> <laughs> Our condolences. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so this thing before we move on. Oh, well, they all going back. The visibility whoa. of the skeleton is absolutely awful. And that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, okay. the green the greenhouse didn't look great. You're not wrong. Like the scouts windows were small. But oh, this- segways were getting good at segways. Yes, thank you. <laughs> say it. Say it. Which part? The greenhouse in this thing that we're going to talk about next. looks absolutely amazing because there's nothing in the way <laughs> because there are no doors and no glass to obstruct anything. So Brabus, 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 Brabus has, uh, has kind of taken some G wagon hints and thrown a tube frame under it, chopped off all the doors, welded up a cage, put a 900 horsepower AMG motor in it. And 40 inch Good tires Lord. called it the crawler, which is completely like befuddling because none of the pictures that's that it's in it's crawling, it's either in the air or like got a rooster tail behind it. Um, and uh, so yeah, so it's a million dollars and it's in the dunes, like huh? carbon fiber, <laughs> whole body's carbon fiber, uh, the seats are carbon backed. And it's, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a G wagon, an AMG G wagon. So just with no G wagon parts, except the body could like the look of an engine. So this and an earth roamer are like siblings because they both have carbon fiber in them now. Sure. <laughs> I would like my, to my, see somebody do an earth roamer. I'm about point. to make the mistake uh, that so many people do when you look at this and you start thinking about its merits versus its costs and you think like, how would, how would you use this? And all the other things, all the opportunity costs of wrapping up your funds in uh, the uh, Brabus yep. crawler. And then you realize that this is a bobble for the ultra elite and right. it doesn't have to make sense. Like remove the logic from it. It's just this absurd thing. I don't think you can do anything in this that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do like in a, uh, a razor or something like that. Oh no, no. But, a pro R will go more places than this. Yes, but it's hugely expensive. So that's cool. <laughs> there will be plenty of these running around the dunes out in the Middle East. And yeah. that's about where it, it starts. It, it, it looks like a, a toy for rich dudes, and that's exactly what it is. And they'll have a blast doing it, and then they'll park it in their warehouse next to everything else mm-hmm. they own and not care. Like, does yeah. it look a little tall to you guys, though? Like, like it when I'm does. thinking about, like, uh, it's odd. Yeah, I feel like I want low and wide, uh, you know, from going sideways on the dunes. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I wonder how long it'll take for these things to get flipped. Well, <laughs> not long at all. When when Ross mentioned roll cage, I started like, kind of like just focusing a little more, and I was like, "That looks like some of those side by side roll cages that we've been told in the past aren't roll rated. Like it doesn't look that Fair. robust as a cage. Mm-hmm. Like it's very interesting how Polaris on its newest models has started making the note and announcement that the roll cage itself is roll rated." <laughs> Concerning the absent from like the, the last you know 10 years of razors. Yeah, with multiple people rolling them all the time. Like <laughs> it is so funny how you can have the implications of function and uh everyone would assume that it must do the thing you must think it does, like calling something autopilot or something. And uh, oh. 
I'm like, with you there. That drives me nuts. You, <laughs> you might assume that it does a certain thing just based on the name, because you couldn't call it that if it didn't do the thing, could you? You couldn't have like a roll cage and have it not function as a roll cage. <laughs> but apparently you could, right? Yeah. Allegedly. Oh, weird. So nuts. So that's the news. We have no other news. Uh, what left? What left? Oh, the ZR2. Silverado ZR2 left. Oh, I put that on our Instagram, didn't I? It's, yeah, it, I have trouble with the ZR2. Um, well, th- this is your it platform. Costs the same as a base Raptor or a base TRX. It doesn't have the same capability. And yes, tight trails, this will fit, those won't. The likelihood of people using these to actually off road, there's going to be five people that buy them to go overlanding, and that is going to be it. Um, you know, the payload is relatively low. You can see from this picture, a 900 pound quad in the back is just, it puts in the It's got a little squat. Yeah, Yeah, it's got a little squat. Lost two inches of, uh, of height in the back with a quad in the back. And it's just, you know, the material quality is not great. And the screen and all the tech just catches it up to GM, to, um, Ford and Ram. And, you know, they made this huge stink about lockers and, and the multimatic suspension, but ultimately, you know, there's so much else about it that I found to be either poorly thought out or just not even half baked. Like the idea was there, and then they turned it over to somebody who said, We can do that for a third of the budget that we want. Arts bins and accountants. Arts and ends there. So that left. Not sad about it. <laughs> Which is a shame because the the uh, Colorado ZR2 is fantastic, you know. It's just let me interrupt uh, with a word from our sponsor, the uh, Chevy Silverado ZR2. <laughs> <laughs> so, so not a fan. If of only, <laughs> yeah. I love that he thinks we're sponsored. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Man, you know they they won't like that take. No. So yeah, they're definitely GM's not calling back anytime soon. So uh, no, no, but it, it is what it is, you know, like. 75 grand for a 1500 series pickup these days is like getting kind of normal. So it better be good. <laughs> yeah, it's very normal. <laughs> it's very normal. I know the Denali Ultimate prices came out. It's like 91000 or $92,000 for 1500 Like Ooh. for a pickup? <laughs> yeah, for 1500 man. So anyways, uh, so that left and not off-road related at all, but the Honda Civic Si has arrived and I put about 30 miles on it today and it is fantastic. That could be rally car related. It counts. I think Honda would have something to say about me rally car in the Civic Si. Just take it through the, the, the quick wash afterwards. Hope they don't look in the undercarriage and uh, <laughs> what they don't know won't hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, I, I haven't driven the Civic Si yet. I've driven the Civic, but I've heard nothing but great things about the Si. Specifically, like um, you know that on paper. When that we, you know, it was revealed, there was a lot of talk about like, ah, it's not making the power or whatever. And it's like, actually like, mm-hmm. it, 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 it just goes to show, I think the SI uh, speaks to the idea that there's um, what's on paper and then there's what you feel as a driver. And oftentimes those things are disconnected. Um, you know, and random uninformed YouTube commenters um, might not know the whole story by looking at a, a spec sheet. 100%. And that is the mantra of the Miata, you know, which is like the trope of all tropes, but it reality is if you're driving it as hard as you can, you know, you feel like you're going faster than if you're going half throttle in a Corvette. So the Civic Si, I mean, it, it's not fast by like GTI standards or, you know, WRX standards or anything else, but like it's 2,900 pounds. It, it just feels great. You know, the shifter's great. The materials are great. It's, it's just nice, you know, so. So completely subjective. Uh, I was eating lunch the other day and I just, you know, look, look out in the parking lot. And I was like, what's that car? Like, is that, that's a Honda? And as I, as I walked, I had to walk by it. And like, why I, it was the first time I'd seen the new Civic in person. Like I, it mm-hmm. looks great. It does look good. This one is very orange. Well, yeah, like, they, aren't all the SIs like that color? Like, isn't that? I think all the, all the fleet cars are, but it's like. <laughs> It's orange and the interior is really red. So it makes for an interesting color. Wait, you have an orange over red car right now? All SIs have red interiors. 
they have the red inserts in the seats and there's a red trim around that honeycomb matrix thing on the dash and like it works it just works okay do so, they do they have to have a nice gray color then because gray over sure. is a fantastic yeah. combination so yeah. so i'm gonna put like 350 miles on it tomorrow so sweet to see um i think that takes us to us i'm headed by the time this is out i will have returned well i won't have returned i will have attended overland expo west uh it's i'm actually i wasn't sure whether i was going or not there were a couple of different shows that i could have ended up at but like the more i've thought about it the amount of people that i'm about to meet in person that we've talked to yeah. over the years yeah. Uh, I literally, as soon as I found out, I sent Richard and Ashley from Dust to Glory. I was like, I'm going to see you guys in person. And they were like, <laughs> we can't wait. Like, because we found on the show like three times. Like, yeah. that's at this point, you're almost friends. Like, if you've that's podcasted awesome. multiple times together. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward. So uh, we have a, a haul of a drive to get out there. We're going to, we're, it's like 17 hours. Uh, so we're going to try and blast out a lot of it and then just do a short drive the next day. Are you sleeping in the vans or using the, camp utility products so the way out we will not be uh sleeping in the vans because the marketing department will have staged them the way they want them to mm. appear uh and so we will probably grab a hotel room for that first night Fair enough. um but like once we'll so they'll be set up for expo um my, my favorite part about this company is not only do the like the people who work for the company go to the expos like a lot of times van owners also are a part of the display team so um the new men's and their van will be meeting us there and so there'll be three uh van duets running around in flagstaff but like it's it's different when it's like just the people working the company versus the people who have paid for it they've bought into the product and they actually very like they've been in uh baja for the last three months so they're traveling back up right now um and then after that though uh the marketing team was like, hey, you you did marketing in the past, right? Yeah, quite a bit. Can you fly a drone, right? Yeah, I am got my FAA certification. Like, what, what are we talking about? They're like, oh, we're going to do a content gathering trip. So Utah, or so start in Arizona, two different stops in Utah, none of which is Monument Valley, which I'm still a little turked off about. I haven't been to Monument yeah. Valley yet. I will go eventually. Um, ditto, dude, ditto. And then uh, Wyoming, and, but because you can't, go to any of the national parks for commercial use stuff so you can get in the forest though and that's okay um i think we got some really choice spots in wyoming that people don't all know about which should be a lot of fun uh and then we got to get the vans to denver by the 30th <laughs> so it's like it, it's a it's a seven day trip with a timeline with uh two vans and a couple of uh dirt bikes so I will not be riding the dirt bikes after a recent knee surgery. So uh, I, I already called, they were like, we should do this cool shot with the vans and the bikes. And I was like, not it for the bike. Like uh, I'm out. Like I don't need the other knee hurt. So I don't need it. <laughs> What's your budget to fly in a one day rider? Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> uh, no budget. <laughs> I don't, you got to talk to marketing. I'm not, I don't get to hold that budget. So. Oh, just gonna find some dude standing outside of 7 Eleven. You come with me. Want to be yeah, in a video? Right, right. Well, like one just of the stops, Moab. I'm sure there's van. someone oh, around man. who can who can be like, I'll ride that. Like just find I the should... biggest dude on a Harley you can. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. Especially because my, my yeah. coworker who's into the dirt bikes is not a large person. Like he's he's very stout, or not stout, but he's not tall. Is uh, he gonna like you hearing? He knows. He's aware. We discussed it today, actually. He's like, look at me. I'm not big. And I was like, you're not wrong. So uh, <laughs> it'll be a good time. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I was just looking forward to going to Expo. And then this second part of it came up. And I was like, oh, man, that's huge. But uh, I have had Fun. to tell my wife this is not going to be a routine thing. This is kind of a one-off. Because <laughs> uh, leaving her at home with four kids by herself for 12 days is not cool. Uh, it's a bunch. Yeah, that it's is twice as many child handling arms as she has the only saving grace is the second weekend of it there's no little league so <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing else she has to do that way she just has to keep them alive so but she's amazing at like that's not even anyway let's talk about micah he's yes. got more fun stuff yes micah does have more fun stuff <laughs> maybe i might be a real drag gentleman uh, <laughs> i've seen instagram out. that does not appear to be a drag 
This is true. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys want to talk about? Uh, how much does it suck to have Jeff Glucker work for you? <laughs> how do you want me to quantify that? I can do like a zero to 100 scale, or we can like go kind of logarithmic, uh, kind of a Richter scale thing. Like, like, uh, how would you? Metric fuck ton. Like, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Ross, here's the other way, other way to look at it. Because we write for Jeff. Awesome. Jeff works for Micah. We're now talking to our boss's boss. That's how that yeah, works. Yeah, I guess it is. I don't know how it works. You know, yeah, here's, what do I, here's what I know about Jeff. Uh, I like uh, have Je having Jeff around because despite my charismatic attitude, I am very much an introvert. And Jeff is the kind of guy that if you're feeling like you just don't have any more words in you, Jeff has words for you. He <laughs> can keep things just rolling right along. And he's just like a random conversation generator. And uh, he's got a story for everything. And it's just, it's good to have somebody like that in your action squad. You need a demolitions expert, you need a face man, and you need some guy that just can keep, keep on talking. Right. He's yeah. Also some sassy Boston vibe uh, helps sometimes too. Exactly. Like if things get heated, uh -huh. it's just like uh, bust out the Boston accent. And then like, maybe that'll be like, Ooh, I don't want to mess with this guy. He it's just dropping fun. his R's. Yeah, oh, well. it gets it gets fun when uh, when he and Camille start going to the, the Bostonisms. Yes, because Boston mm -hmm. losing Camille. I, Boston yeah, because Boston because he might entire. consume this. I'll just say I like working with Jeff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so do we. That's after a, all these I, years. Your description is perfect because our average episodes around like one to one and a half hours, and Jeff's episodes are always like oh. two. <laughs> yeah it's, it's usually abbreviated not abbreviated but like broken up by jeff going i, I have to go get another beer yep. right pit, pit stops for beers yep. and bathroom breaks is yep. <laughs> jeff's episodes i didn't know that was an option okay uh, yeah yeah like, well of course well, everything i mean let's, <laughs> let's two hour shows are you know they're exhausting but they are fun so we we've actually talked about you on the show quite a bit but it was indirectly mm -hmm. because of your bronco Oh, yeah, yeah. What did you say about the Bronco? You're moving the uh, unlock, or what's that called? Um, yeah, the uh, the security code uh, yes. key, uh, keypad. The yeah, when you yeah. found out it wasn't wired. <laughs> a, it's amazing to me. So, like, if you look at the Bronco, uh, when when we picked it up, um, you you look at the thing and like, oh yeah, that's cool. The cactus grape color has more of a minty tone than I was I was expecting, and that looks awesome. And then it's like, oh, there's a little bit of a sag in the rear rear windows there in the plastic. I wonder if that's normal. Like, God, look at that ugly secure code keypad. I think <laughs> Ford's keypad entry system is is awesome we use it all the time we live up here in the mountains and you know when we go on a hike or something like that um you know you can just like leave stuff in the car leave the fob in the car um if if uh, i had an even more active lifestyle <laughs> i was a surfer or something you can just leave it in there and you don't have to worry about it getting wet or leaving in a shoe or something it's cool but it is so ugly because it's just right on the door there it's we go pretty, that's yeah. the car you look at the side and it's just like not only is it like kind of an eyesore, but it was a little bit crooked. <laughs> like, <laughs> truly, the first day we picked it up, oh. I'm like, that's getting fixed. And so um, it did some investigation and like, uh, it is literally just glued on. Uh, there's like, a, it's like two-sided tape uh, to be more accurate. And my understanding is that you can't even change the batteries on it. It's it's like a single unit that has a lifetime battery that's made to last, I don't know, five to 10 years. And then once it dies, you throw it out and you get a fresh one. But knowing yeah. that it was just a wireless stuck on thing, I thought mm, there's gotta be a better way. And um, I, a little investigation, I found um, that the Ford Ranger owners had uh, some people had already done that same sort of thing taking it off of the door and putting it underneath mm -hmm. the um, fuel filler door and uh, it's it's a really um, kind of a nicely sized spot to put it nobody would ever think to look there uh, to mess with it um, not that there's much to be messed with right. but the question is will I blow up my Bronco with all the electricity <laughs> flying around in the keypad adjacent to the, uh, the, the filler fuel. tube? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, uh, okay, so uh, what are the odds that we have like the uh, perfect stoichiometric ratio in that little oh, like boy. tube there? Uh, Ford fails to keep um, uh, the uh, um, fuel uh, uh, gases from venting yeah. out. A in little flap stays closed or anything. Yeah, it's like there a lot of things would have to go wrong. Sparks are shooting out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My, it's definitely the first time anyone said stoichiometric on the show. 
That is hey, for sure. Good, good. Check 100%. that one off in the bingo card. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it's just one of those like, yeah, it, it uh, seemed like a good place to put it. And I can mm-hmm. verify we've had it in that position now for maybe six months and car hasn't blown up. I mean, not yet. Maybe it will. Not yet. But um, Michael Bay is on, little rep- on the other line detonator <laughs> in the background. <laughs> yep. It's so easy that a friend of ours bought a two door Bronco and she's like, can you move it? I'm like, I can show you how to do it. She's like, can you just move it? I'm like, sure. So, uh, so I just like went out. It took like five minutes and just, oh. it's really easy to swap out. So uh, Ford okay. can't do that necessarily, Sorry. but uh, I'm glad right. I can. So how are, do you reapply more tape or do you just use the same tape and clean it really good where you put it? I just cleaned it really good. I got some goo gone uh, to remove the uh, remaining uh, two-sided tape on the door. And you know, the important thing to do is uh, do it early because uh, the later you do it, the more likely it is there'll be some fading potentially between the uh, where the, the um, keypad is and the surrounding area. But we did it promptly. And um, and then just a little uh, extra, you know, like 3M two-sided tape um, popped it on and uh, that works great. So cool. that's my, um, that's about as like, well, not as deeply mechanical as I get, but like as I get older, it's like, I just want to hand those responsibilities off to people with money like hey you take care of this we just like change the shocks and struts on our crv and it's like i'm not doing that i'm gonna find a dude <laughs> who do wants this. to do that so, yeah it seems like a real pain so yeah like uh I, i'm into the light modifications just because i don't have the time to invest in injuring life, myself life improvement modifications not necessarily like big physical things for the sake of doing them get absolutely that. Get that. yeah yeah, now uh, we're looking at video of my wife um, getting on two wheels in the Bronco. And I mean, uh, so this is not an advertisement for Broncos, uh, but I will say that uh, in the olden days, I used to think that extra capability was kind of a poser move. You know, like when you see like the vehicles that are way overbuilt for how people are using them, I thought, oh, that's pretty lame. And then driving with my wife, I've realized that that extra capability for her equals confidence. The Bronco is so overbuilt for what she would do with it that it, it's made her much more um, eager to try different things off road that she would have never been comfortable doing before. And uh, this kind of moment here where it's like, she's actually just having a lot of fun. Exactly. My wife is- the smile on her face is huge. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, you know, getting that thing up on two wheels. If I told her like a year ago that that's what she'd be doing in the Bronco, uh, you know, she, she would have thought I was a damn dirty liar. I mean, she knows I'm a damn dirty liar, but in this particular context, she would have had proof. So, um, yeah, like the Bronco has been a really good lifestyle vehicle for us. And I say that with great hesitance because I've sat through many a press launch where uh, some PR flack uses the phrase lifestyle vehicle. Oh, and yeah. it's like, oh, I, mean, I don't want to be that guy, but. For us, for how we live, it's been kind of amazing. Where we live, there's just off-road trails everywhere. I mean, truly everywhere. Right. Like, uh, and so we can, <laughs> yeah. And so you can like spontaneous off-roading is a big part of what we do. And so having that kind of capability with the, um, the four-door Bronco Sasquatch uh, has been awesome. This is your first off-roader that you've owned? Yeah. I mean, I guess, uh, well, okay. Uh first off-roader that um, didn't have major mechanical flaws. So my first off-roader was a uh, 1986 Isuzu Trooper two-door. Yes, that was my very yes. first vehicle. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it, it old carbureted engine. And it had this thing where if you drove it like more than like 15 minutes, the engine wouldn't idle. And it was a five-speed manual. Mm-hmm. So like uh, that's one of the, where I first um, started dabbling with left foot braking trying to like keep the engine alive with the right foot yeah. and not and moving too far with the left. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so you might say that was my <laughs> first off-roader, but this is like my first real off-roader, the kind of off-roader that you could like take off-road and have some expectation that it'll get you back home. The good kind, the kind that actually lets you enjoy it without just being panicked or worrying half the time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, truly like not not to delve into the lifestyle stuff too much, but like um, we've got a six-year-old daughter and uh, she absolutely loves being out in the Bronco. She likes uh, being able to throw the top back. Um, she loves going up, you know, uh, kind of semi-gnarly terrain. And it's it's proven to be just like a really good, wholesome, easy family activity. So, cool. um, so far, I really am, am digging the experience. Good to hear. How are you finding the, because you and anybody can see this on your YouTube channel, your Instagram, and you get a, a lot of seat time in a lot of cars that are road cars 
family-friendly road cars and sports cars, which traditionally yeah. compared to an off-roader have polar opposite dynamics. Um, mm-hmm. So how are you finding like the day-to-day comfort and drivability and, you know, noise and then, you know, all the NVH stuff with the Bronco? When it comes to assessing vehicles, I um, always point out that your impression of a vehicle is largely colored by your anchor point, and the anchor point is whatever you drove right before it. So <laughs> our anchor point before the Bronco arrived was a long-term Jeep Gladiator from the Kelly Blue Book fleet. We drove it for eight months, and uh, I don't know when the last time was you guys drove a Jeep Gladiator uh, or Wrangler, but the yet. amount of play yeah. on center – It looks like you're in an old timey movie pretending to drive. There's so much movement. It's, it's comical. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that coupled with um, kind of um, uh, sort of unmoored suspension qualities. So where we live, we're mountain folk. And I don't know if you guys spend much time. It sounds like you guys spend a little time in the mountains, but uh, there's no faster driver than like, some dude in a uh, clapped out pickup truck oh, yeah. who knows the roads exactly. and <laughs> somebody commuting in their old yes piece of shit totally. truck. yeah yes and so I, i've slowly become one of those guys where <laughs> to me there is real joy in driving um slow vehicles quickly on mountain roads i kind of gained some of that sense driving the uh gladiator and then the bronco fills the same roles what i would say is that the bronco is so much more refined in its road manners um there are it's like i've got a proper ab test there are certain corners uh coming up the mountain that i know there's a bump mid corner and i know exactly how there's this kind of like uh rockabye motion like i'm a little dingy or something like that different things and you feel it going between front and back Bingo, you nailed it. And uh, with the Bronco, it just doesn't do that. It's weird because we went through with the Sasquatch package and you'd think, well, that's gonna be even like less competent on road. It's shockingly capable on road. Uh, steering feel is just plain good versus like um, Gladiator. And that like uh, suspension composure has been been awesome. And even like stuff like road noise and wind noise, like with the soft top, Compared to the Gladiator, it's it's a it's actually quite quite a bit better. So um, Good deal. yeah, and, and most of the time when we're driving up here, we're driving at thirty five miles an hour on, on windy little mountain roads. Mm-hmm. So um, the noise for our needs doesn't really um, bother us. Fair enough. That's good to hear. Uh, we like hearing good reports on on trucks. You know, there was there was a stretch where uh, Bronco tie rods were having bad weekends, and we yeah. got a bunch of those. You know, but new off roaders were always up for hearing good things. So. I will quickly add that we have had, um, we did have a few weird things. There was like a, um, uh, a slight uh, resistance to return to center with the steering when accelerating out of a corner. And it was the kind of like nuanced steering behavior that I was like, like, it's hard to describe and it's hard to demonstrate. The dealer will never be able to repeat this. Right. But I think it was a, a, a tread situation because as uh, tires have rotated, uh, it's essentially subsided. Uh, we had a, a a whistle that slowly drove me crazy that there was a recall <laughs> for. They had to like rip some stuff out and change the seal. But it was like, oh no. <laughs> and oh my God. As, as a music guy, I was just like, I, I can't deal with this. So there's been a few little things. Um, you guys watch Stranger Things? Uh, not since the first season. No? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it, if you remember what the, the upside down looks like, yeah. kind of like inverted colors, dark and scary, our backup camera creates the exact same image nice. uh, intermittently. So sometimes it looks normal. Sometimes it looks like we're uh, backing up into a demigorgon and <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, it's random and can't be pro- uh, reproduced by the dealership. Oh, so, uh, so randomly yes. terrified when you put the vehicle in reverse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great. So there are some things that are, um, there are a, little, a few like small issues, um, but on, on the whole for what we're doing, it's been great. To be clear though, like we're not doing like the gnarly off-roading, like the stuff where you see people breaking tie rods and stuff. So, um, you know, like we just want to go places. And, <laughs> 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 yeah. Like, uh, like we, we just want to be able to go out and have family adventures. We're not trying to like prove how like badass we are. So, um, you know, for our needs, the Bronco has been great. Yeah. Good. That's good. Sounds fun. I, still oh, I am bonding with my daughter. Uh, we had a daddy daughter weekend. Uh, my, my wife was uh, out of town for Mother's Day because she's smart. And uh, <laughs> like it was just <laughs> me Don't and kiddo. Him. Yeah. And Dude, we had like, 
Yeah, we had such a good time just like going out in the Bronco. We um, uh, teamed up with some friends. Uh, my kiddo was in charge of the radio and, uh, you know, doing the walkie talkie action. Nice. And uh, it's just the absolute best. So um, so that's been good. How's car seat space? Car seat space is good. We did a video on, on my YouTube channel talking about the two door Bronco versus the four door Bronco. Uh, and when we were ordering, that was one of the big questions. It's like, we can save a substantial sum if we went with the two door and, uh, you know, but we got the kiddo and it's like, do we make a mistake? Should we have uh, saved some money? The four door is absolutely the way to go. Uh, not only for ingress, egress, but, um, but yeah, like rear seat leg room ample space for a car seat. Um, even if uh, my daughter was in a rear facing car seat, it, it would be easy for us to uh, get her back there without any issue. I really couldn't say that cool. with the uh, two door. Um, yeah, and unless if you're a contortionist. Yeah, uh, and I am, so that works out well. Uh, <laughs> my <so>. other job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, my other, other job. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I went to uh, four years of clown college and this is what became. So uh, no, but like uh, for family duty, yeah, there we go. <laughs> for family duty, the uh, the four door has been, been great. Uh, despite the occasional YouTube commenter that points out that Broncos have two doors and a V8. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. fine. Uh, uh, calm down. Dude, they've been building <laughs> four-door Wranglers since 2007, and people are still quick to say it's not a real Wrangler. It has four doors instead of two. Yeah. Do you, do you guys yeah, have the I, sense that in the, in the off-road community that perhaps there's um, uh, some reluctance to uh, embrace the new? You know, there might be. There might I, be a little reluctance I, to change in the in the, uh, the greater off-roading community. I don't think it's just off-road. I think that's automotive in general. Like look at all of the BMW hate the last couple of years for things that objectively look horrible, but <laughs> the, 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 the enthusiasts are also are like, but it's not the old one. Like they, like those new BMWs are super fast. Like they're really, yeah. I, I did There's give the guy every coin. Right. I did give the guy in front of me in the M4 convertible that was super slow at the light, a uh, honk on the horn, because I was like, let's go, man. I know you have a sports car. Like, come on. Like, mm -hmm. But I, yeah. I, I do think that's automotive in general. They're like, especially if what was in the past was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really hard for yeah. them to then embrace the new one. It, it seems like um, the, uh, there is a, a notion that what was is all that can be. The idea yes. of like, oh, you put a Mustang name on an electric SUV and we hate that. And it's like, I get that. I understand that. It hurts you because you know this thing and now we've zombified it and made it this unfamiliar thing that you don't quite uh, understand. Yeah. It's, it's like when you see a loved one, they turned into a zombie. It's like, I love you, but now you're different. Exactly. Like, yeah, that can be hard. <laughs> but it's off your head. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but it would just suck if if all that could exist is the stuff that already existed, and especially mm -hmm. in the automotive realm right now too. There's just so much change, and a lot of it's really interesting change. I, I just say yeah. like uh, like relax and just uh, let let the wave of new newness wash over and judge well, it like, on its merit. The mm -hmm. the thing I've said a couple of times on the show is like the definition of what a car is is going to change for the coming generations. They're not going to be four door sedans. They're going to be playing with crossover SUV hot wheels and calling it a car. Like it's what mm -hmm. that'll be their definition. Like it's fine. Yeah. So old things yeah. can pass. <laughs> Speaking of change, let's talk lightning because that is probably the biggest sweeping change for a single automobile. And I mean, and it's real. And it's, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's really real because we know people who have driven that. Right. Or, and, and one dealer of those markups. People for yeah. 100 grand over so uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so general yeah. take from reading is that it's it's good and i can confirm uh having driven the thing it's it's really good you know when you when i'm when i was making the video i had the thought where it's like there's too much positive here it's going to feel biased because I'm mm. saying too many nice things, but it yeah. is truly the best riding F-150 I've driven, the mm. most practically designed, laid out uh, vehicle. Mm. Um, it, it just has as attributes that you can't really duplicate when you have an engine in the nose. Right. Um, there's the so many clever. like, yeah. yeah, it's super, super clever. Uh, and it's 
definitely the quickest. The acceleration, even in like the base version, is is kind of mind blowing for a truck. I mean, truly, like that immediate electric torque, zero to sixty times in like the mid fours, like in just an electric pickup. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Like so, like there's the two different uh, you know battery sizes, standard and, and extended range, and the extended range is four and a half seconds. Standard one is five, and like. So it dealer raised. markup is a major issue, but just like the, that pro model, which is the absolute base version under $40,000, um, 775 pound feet of torque. 6,200 um, like, pounds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, the, uh, there's, there's, um, like, so there's the weight of the battery to consider, but it's, it moves it so well and it's low placed. I think it's just, um, it's a little bit floaty. Okay. Like uh, suspension is a little bit, um, I guess it feels a little un, uh, undamped, but then when you get a hitch on it, like when you're pulling a trailer, mm -hmm. then that goes away. Uh, so it's, okay. it's kind of like they're trying to find that balance between yeah. um, unladen and laden handling. And when you're pulling, I had to pull the trailer, it was like 5,000 pound trailer. It felt much better, but okay. I just think like it, it was such a good all around vehicle and the range was, was um, as advertised uh, when I was driving the thing. And it's just like, this thing is kind of incredible. And it exists to your point. <laughs> yeah, it's like years part. before Ram or GM have theirs available. It's it's pretty amazing. Or or the other one that's just mythical. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw a Rivian. Its name. I didn't tell you. I saw a Rivian. Did you? The first one that I've seen in person since the New York Auto Show when they launched it, and it looked great. Yeah, Definitely it, it's, has presence. It's like, and I'm in I'm in the Midwest, like, and I saw one. Like the fact that it's in truck yeah. country now, like. And it's such a reasonable size it's compared yeah. to like the T Rex, which is ginormous. You can be like, just a Rivian is amazing. And they, the torque numbers, like that's a performance yeah. competitor all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, so yeah. have you spent time in the Rivian yet? Yes, I was on the launch event in Colorado in the Rivian. And um, yeah, the, uh, the, Ground clearance is outstanding. That completely flat bottom is, is yes. awesome. There's nothing like hanging down. Um, the uh, prompt electric torque, uh, great attribute. The ability to, you know, um, uh, when you, we've got like uh, the electric motors and the ability to kind of manipulate those wheels independently, <laughs> um, like the speed with which it can make those adjustments, it, it gives it some really unique capabilities. Mm. I really liked it. And honestly, like, um, I am a real skeptic. Like uh, anytime like a car startup, it, like starts talking to me, I'm just like, I, I, I want to believe, yeah. but these things, uh, the most likely outcome is failure. <clears throat> and so when I showed up uh, like the, it's really well sorted, like uh, the interior fitments, it, it feels they, they weren't aiming for like automotive inspiration they were aiming for like crate and barrel and true enough if you look at the, the, the floor mats they're made out of the stuff called chillowitch which is what you make place mats out of for for crate oh, and barrel that's really they fun. literally sourced it from the same place but we like there's so much clever innovation in there that um the gear tunnel super practical mm -hmm. all of our meals were cooked with the kitchen from yeah, the gear tunnel um, it's just, it's really clever. And it's like, it's not a work truck like the F-150 is. It's very much a lifestyle vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, put a pop-up tent on the, uh, the crossbars and the bed, that kind of thing. Uh, but I yeah, I think it's, it's, it's super cool. Um, you know, like if, if I had the means and, uh, you know, they were making them in, in, in uh, bigger, big enough numbers. Yeah. I'd happily drive a Rivian. <laughs> Did I, I want so. the, I want the SUV. <laughs> I need the, all the seat belts, and that would be my commuter. Mm -hmm. Like that would be my back and forth. Yeah, that'd be anyway. great. That'd be a great suburban replacement once they, right? you know, exist. But okay, so Rivian's fantastic, totally clean sheet design. Is does the lightning feel like as much of a success in putting electric out there in a way that people are going to enjoy it in the same way that something completely new like Rivian does? I, I think uh, Lightning does the important job of bringing electrification to the masses in a way that something novel like the R1T doesn't. The R1T is, okay. is to be fair, a lifestyle vehicle for rich people. Um, especially and, you with know, the price hikes. Yeah, especially with the price hikes. Whereas the, uh, the F-150 Lightning 
because it's based on a familiar and trusted platform, the resistance you'll get from tr truck people to adopt electric um, starts to wear down a little bit. It's like, well, I'm not an electric guy, but I am a Ford guy. Like, sure, okay, I'll give it a, give it a try. I was talking to uh, some of their PR folk and they were talking about um, some of the uh, uh, um, testing that they did with, um, you know, like they had uh, Ford owners come in and like, okay, uh, what do you guys think about electric? Eh, I don't like electric, okay. And then like they talked to them about, um, you know, uh, the Raptor just to kind of cleanse the palate. And then they came mm -hmm. back and they said, what if we made an F-150 that uh, could tow up to 10,000 pounds and uh, did zero to 60 in four and a half seconds and uh, had, uh, you know, the ability to like power your house when the electricity goes out and, uh, you know, did all the things, got the same bed, but you have an F-150, all the same features and everything like that. But is that something you'd like? Absolutely. I want that. Give me that. It's electric. And then it's like, it's like the, the attributes um, are a bit disconnected from the image that people have of the vehicle yeah. as being electric. And you kind of have to break through the, um, the kind of the self image people have about like, I'm a, I'm a, a truck guy and I have a V8 right. and it does all these things. The you have focus to break that stuff hates. down. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, and so I think the F-150 Lightning is the vehicle, one of the vehicles best positioned to break through that EV resistance. Mm -hmm. And and especially when you look at its, its um, proposition as a work truck. Like if you've got a fleet of trucks that have to go to kind of like regular places or you have work sites, it makes so much sense. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. As, a, as, not, as truly like, like, if you just sold like a $40,000 battery setup that kept your house uh, from uh, going down during brownouts, uh, that would be uh, like, that's ah, kind of cool. But if you also made it a vehicle and it could power a work site yep. and uh, it could be the hub around which all the work happens and you like your dudes, you got eight plugs, you can just like plug anything you want yeah. in. Uh, like it's, it becomes a really interesting proposition. And even st add the additive stuff like using your vehicle as an electric buffer, like uh, char like so the idea that like um, in California we have intermittent uh, uh, um, blackouts because of like forest fires or, or like uh, excessive usage or whatever. And the idea that like that just sort of like fills in gaps when the grid's down, yeah. like- oh, it's amazing. It's kind of amazing. It's, it's really amazing. And that aspect of it has like a functionality perspective that I think people won't really appreciate until they see it in use the first time. But yeah. on the flip side, there's, you know, fools like us who are looking at it going, okay, so I can use it to tow a trailer. And when we get there to where we're going, we can use the power outlets to power barbecue, you know, yeah. or an electric grill or like to do something idiotic, you know. Um, but I, I think one of the big <clears throat> things that helped it was the Texas power outage. The, like mm, I saw, yep. I, I a number of people be like, I can go get a generator or I can go get an F-150 with the hybrid, but the, was a pro power on board. Like they, mm -hmm. they, they, they were, mean, they were already with the hybrid. They were already thinking about it. Now you have the full out F-150 box. Let's be real. You Do know, they, <laughs> but yeah, but not, they, when, not when everybody's trying to buy them. Right. But right. like they, they saw the F-150 as a more usable thing for that scenario mm -hmm. because they could use it the rest of the time as their vehicle. Like they, it wasn't just a random thing that they would purchase. But like, I, and that's, that's the state, that's truck country. Like that's beyond truck. That is mm -hmm. the ultimate <laughs> for her. And to have an F-150 be there in the lightning first, like, see, you're going to win. <laughs> we need an electric Raptor, which is like irony mm -hmm. of ironies because there's going to be Raptor R, this or next year with, you know. Is the R confirmed with the V8? Yes, I believe. Um, what's his name? Mike Levine. Mike Levine has confirmed that it's a V8. Okay. And that will probably get single digit gas mileage. So what What if there's another, like, another one that's EV? Raptor E. Dude, the whole e GT Raptor. showed up and no one had any idea where you're in a new Ford GT. Why wouldn't they just throw an electric brilliant. Raptor at us too? That like, was brilliant. Yeah, they're the only ones pulling out shit like that. So, I don't know. It's, it's, it's back it's to Micah's point. We exciting. Sometimes we give Ford too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> but as like, as automakers say, go, they're one of the ones that has, like, they have more column or more checks in the wind column than a lot of other manufacturers. 
especially as of late. I feel like the um, the Lightning launch let me know that they weren't half-assing this one. They really were thoughtful about all the ways to, or many of the ways to exploit it. And I think what's cool about the Lightning and cool about electrification in general is that um, it's kind of like when uh, Apple introduced the App Store and it's like, oh, that's kind of neat. And then it's like, it's sort of an open uh, field in which clever people can find new ways to innovate. Mm -hmm. I think people like you are going to find great ways to exploit all that battery space there. I mean, whether it's like, um, you know, having a uh, margarita machine available uh, <laughs> at the campsite or like uh, e-bikes awesome. or, yeah, yeah. Or like, there, I, I think there's a lot of ways. <laughs> e-bikes, that's that. a good one. Uh, yeah. I, I can charge that's, that's your really... e-bike from your truck. Like, yeah. Uh, the electric dirt bikes, like a zero or something. Mm -hmm. Killer. Yeah, on your way to, on your way to the trails or whatever, like yeah. that's where oh, you charge man. it. I mean, it's just oh, dude, like it's awesome. super cool. And uh, uh, taking a lightning to the trails to drive your e bike to then power it from the truck to, and then go yep. out and get like that. Roll out be... your solar panels. That'd be glorious. So the only it, downside is we had to sacrifice the Fiesta and Focus SD. To get yeah, that. <laughs> that was a, that an inevitability. I think Ross, it wasn't mm -hmm. so much sacrifice. They were. They were gone, um, but yeah. it is, it is something like the 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 customers at work, like the discussion of like power, is something that happens all the time because they only have a two thousand watt inverter. So they're they're starting to talk about like what can you run at the same time and all that kind of stuff. Like I I feel like I live in this world now. Of it's they're not EV vans, they're not E transits, they're they're regular transit, but like it's constantly everyone's concerned about electricity. Like I'm we're so electrical focused. So you're going to be mad when I sneak out and put an alternator from a Chevy Cruze in a Suburban? Does it fit? <laughs> I'll just jump. It's like, I got a little, <laughs> I got a voltmeter. Like, what? <laughs> Why are you messing with my truck? <laughs> uh, when's the last time you started your truck? How do you know I didn't do it already? Okay, let's move ago. on. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about really, really going off the road. And this is such a great air topic. travel. I know. Yeah. I know. It's the specifically hella camping because that might be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Those are two words I didn't mm. know could be joined together. But yeah, please tell us about it because um, I don't have a helicopter. Madness. Yeah. So for those who don't know, I'm a helicopter pilot. I got my license back in 2008, and um, you know, I when I first got the license, um, you know, I was renting helicopters. And when you rent a helicopter, like they kind of want it to be back where you rented it from, so they can use it to, um, you know, like train other helicopter pilots. So really, if you want to go have helicopter adventures, you need to own your own helicopter. Mm -hmm. And so I finally bought my own helicopter uh, in 2015. It was a uh, Enstrom 280C, which is uh, kind of like a three seat bench. And really I'm not like, okay, so uh, there's there's like a bucket list of things like you kind of want to do when you get the helicopter, like flying to Catalina would be great. Flying to a press event would be awesome. Landing at a racetrack and driving race cars would be a cool thing to do. And I've done those things. Uh, but the heli camping <laughs> thing is intriguing because um, I have noted that Truly, the helicopter is the ultimate off-roader. Yeah, so like uh, we're looking at a picture of my uh, old Enstrom 280C. That's the, um, the helicopter. That was my first uh, purchase. That thing was built in 1978. What? The same oh. year I was. Yeah, and uh, this still looks quite contemporary. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, so I, I camped in that thing once. I went to this uh, crazy thing called the uh, Arizona Flying Circus, which is a um, fly-in event at a private dirt strip uh, somewhere to the west of Tucson. And uh, it's all for powered paragliders, but you're allowed to fly an airplane oh, wow. in, or helicopter, or whatever. I was the only helicopter there. But uh, it was great because, you know, you kind of land in your space. And um, I, the, the real promise of helicopter, like heli camping, is not just like kind of, is that you can go places you can't drive to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's something that I have not quite exploited just yet. I've camped a couple of times. Uh, most recently, I was out on uh, the playa, this uh, dry lake bed called the Wilcox Playa, um, kind of to the east of Tucson. And I was uh, uh, there for a video shoot that we were doing. But yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Um, 
I mean, and what was wonderful is like, you just kind of land and you set yourself up and the new helicopter we have, which is a Robinson R44 has a lot more room. So uh, no issues with gear space. Um, but I think like what I'm interested to explore, and I'm just starting to dabble into that is the idea of like going with the family, finding somewhere that's truly remote and uh, being able to just kind of get away from, from people. Cause I don't know if you guys know, but uh, people suck and you just want to get <laughs> yeah, away from them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, and i would say too that uh, the travel um aspect of it like getting to where you camp i think is is super thrilling truly nothing i've ever done in my life is quite as um as fully engaging as flying a helicopter okay so so many questions that piggyback on that first of all like what's the how far are you going for the heli camping stuff and what's the range of the actual like vehicle you know do you basically fly out there spend a night go back to where you came from or can you pogo about the same way you can you know in like an overlanding situation yeah you really could overland it in that there are more airports around the united states than you would imagine so literally like a four minute flight north from where this picture is taken there's a little airport there's a, a, a woman in her like you know mid to late 70s who operates the, uh, the little store there and there's fuel available and so you have to be strategic about where your fuel stops are um, like for example flying out so I'm based in Southern California um, so I flew the helicopters based at San Bernardino International and so flying from there out to this uh, dry lake bed um, it's a little bit like island hopping in that, uh, you know, I've got, uh, so it's not so much range as much as it is like uh, endurance by time. So my helicopter can fly pretty comfortably close to almost three hours, um, you know, but uh, when you get to up towards three hours, you need to land and, you know, uh, leave yourself some fuel reserve. But, uh, you know, so like um, uh, for, for my purposes, uh, you know, uh, I've stopped in Blythe. And then, you know, I can move on and fly the rest of the way out, you know, maybe stop at wow. Gila Bend. So as long as you um, do a little bit of um, you know, uh, flight plan recon. beforehand, yeah. and a little bit of recon <laughs> and you know where your fuel stops are. And then also verify that there will indeed be fuel because I have had this happen on two different occasions where you go somewhere where there's always fuel and then inexplicably the uh, fuel pumps are, are shut down. No, really. So verifying that uh, there's fuel nearby. And, but like, as long as you kind of uh, map it out you can go like to pretty much anywhere. Like so, mm -hmm. somebody asked me like, well, how far can you fly the helicopter? It's basically unlimited if you don't mind right. stopping for fuel. What's your tolerance for intermittent stops? It's like a, it's a road trip. Like you yeah. gotta take or, potty breaks. You gotta get fuel. Like boat just, trip. Yeah. The, the place you dock may or may not have fuel, but once you're, <laughs> on, once you're going, you're going, you know? Well, it's funny. There was one of the things with the helicopter. I just flew out to Las Vegas for the launch of the Nissan Z. And on the way back, I, oh. I had to whiz. And so I just <laughs> stopped. I just landed in a dry lake bed and made okay. it slightly less dry. From LA. That's awesome. Like, isn't it like three and a half or four hours? How long does it take by helicopter? I want to say like um, it was maybe like an hour 45 thereabouts. Uh, so, okay. I mean, you, you have the straight line advantage um, uh, and depending on how the winds are. So like, yeah, so like uh, if you have a, a major headwind, then that can slow you down. If you have a tailwind, that's an advantage. If it's very rough, you have to slow the helicopter down a little bit. Um, so uh, a comfortable cruise in my helicopter, right about 100 knots, which is like 115 miles an hour. Uh, but if you're doing that straight line, uh, that can you know really cut off a lot of time for travel. So, um, yeah, I flew to Santa Barbara recently for uh, the Subaru Solterra launch. And, um, you know, that was, I think, I, I basically halved my commute time just by taking the chopper. And then you get to fly along the coastline, which is, you is um, yeah, yeah, you're not. Oh, my gosh. That was a dolphin. Billboards. <laughs> that was a dolphin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, slide topic real quick. This podcast will go up. I believe the Z embargo is Monday, right? Monday the... 16th yes can yes. we since this is going up after can you divulge us and, and talk z yeah as long as this is going up after the embargo uh i will z, make sure it goes I, up after 
I really enjoyed the Z. I think, uh, so some of the complaints that I heard when I was on the launch was like, ah, oh, it's not powerful enough or whatever. Um, and I think that might just be like um, certain reviewers uh, privilege <laughs> showing. Like, uh, I, I think 400 horsepower is plenty. I thought the sound uh, in the cabin from, uh, with the, um, the uh, twin turbo V6 was a little, I wanted a little bit more like low end growl, but it, 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 um, it felt plenty quick. Um, suspension is softer than you might expect. Um, it's got uh, uh, kind of a compliant quality to it, which I don't really mind. I think there are certain cues that sports cars and like uh, even super fast cars try to give you to make them seem fast. Like, uh, have you guys driven a Lamborghini recently? <laughs> Just like whenever you drive a Lamborghini, uh, the gear changes are like, Duh! yeah. Yeah. Duh, here's third now. Bam. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, look how fast I am. Ugh. And it's like, that's actually like a bad attribute on a racetrack. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it big, you know, uh -huh. yeah, big ass kicking uh, uh, gear changes are like not ideal. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing with like a super firm suspension. Like, oh, I don't know oh. if you guys uh, like have driven like you know, Streets of Willow or something like that, where it's like, this isn't a great surface. Uh, you know, so having some compliance, I think is nice. And also I think the way they set it up, it gives them some room to tighten things up for like the inevitable miss mode. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's like an all around package. It seems very balanced. My only complaint would be that we were doing like a lead follow um, for the track experience. And uh, it wasn't quite as like, spicy as you might need to like see mm. what it does you know when you're like really pushing it yeah. so uh, but i would say like uh six speed manual looked great um the fact that it's built on the uh, modified sixth generation platform like people like us might be like i don't know it's uh they're reusing the old platform people who buy it just won't care okay like, uh, like frontier though the new the current frontier yeah is great nobody that walks in not knowing anything about this gonna say mm -hmm. oh, that looks like it has the same frame as the as the last one with modified suspension pickup points no exactly. nobody's gonna say that um okay good good to hear good to hear that it's good um, yeah and, and i think uh very um like well-rounded in a way that you would actually drive it on the street they've um okay they've done a good job making a well-rounded vehicle. And if you want something that's a little bit, um, you know, skews further towards the sporty end of the spectrum, the aftermarket awaits um, uh, and it gives you some room to, to make those moves, but just like as an all around vehicle, patience. I think it works really well. And also uh, I'll say too, that, that, that was a nine speed uh, automatic um, did such a good job. Like, uh, like I know I'm supposed to like hate automatics, but it was oh. very competent. Like, like on the track, just like put it in sport mode, it was always in the right key. Like hmm. it proactively downshifts before the corners. It just kind of is doing what it needs to be done. I didn't have to think about it. And for me, oftentimes, like if I'm not thinking about it, it's working correctly yeah. and I didn't have to think about it. Yeah. yeah, It's not calling your attention to it, then it's doing its job. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Yep. You're like, um, why haven't I seen that guy at work in days? Cause he's doing his job. Like he'll leave him alone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's had his head down in his cubicle for the last exactly. 72 hours. Um, did they, they haven't mentioned, they haven't announced price or anything. Yeah. Oh, Z? oh, yeah. No, this is the crazy part. So 400 horsepower, um, and it's just under 40 grand. What? That's solid. Like 40 That's grand, solid. 400 horsepower is pretty remarkable. That's... Oh, also the uh, automatic is a no cost option. So basically you just oh. choose whichever one you want. Yeah. So a six speed manual, uh, nine speed automatic, whatever <laughs> you want. And it's the same price. Uh, I'd be inclined to go for the uh, performance grade if only to get the limited slip differential. The base one doesn't have that. Oh, and I feel like good. if if you're buying a Z, you want to drive like an asshole. And so uh, <laughs> you got to have the limited slip, right? Yep. Am I right? It's literally yeah. every Z you see on the street. <laughs> Every Z, every so, FRS, BRZ, like they're 40 just, grand. I mean, you know, there's that LT1 Dream Camaro, which we know is going mm -hmm. away next year. There's the base Mustang GT. And then under 40 grand, there's nothing else with that much power. Not with that much power. Yeah, I would say Subaru BRZ's low 30s, but it's not even close to no, that much power. Close. Like, the, yeah. Actually, the Miata that was supposed to come today that got bumped to the first week of June. $39,000. It was an R really? RF club with every single option that they could put on it. But 39, mm. that's the same price. And that's, you know, it's still like 182 exactly. versus 400 horsepower. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and I think there are people who are going to complain about like uh, not doing like a fresh sheet platform, but uh, it's like you have to view these things holistically and that, okay, if you want to like a, just like a, a complete new seventh generation platform, then the answer is you don't get a Z. Yeah. No, the answer that's, is- That's your answer. The answer is, well, yeah, you either don't get a Z or it starts at 59, you know? Exactly. Like yeah, yeah. people yeah. who complain about stuff like that also- have probably never looked at a balance sheet. <laughs> you know, so we're back to those accounts yeah. again. Oh uh, yeah, them fucking accountants. Dude, money matters. God. All the time. <laughs> well, sweet. Mike, Mike, do you have anything you want to plug? <laughs> I feel like we've covered a lot. Anything I want to plug? Yeah. Um, boy. Oh, you know, okay. I will um, I will appease my overlords and say that um, uh, I've been working at Kelly Blue Book now for 15 years wow. uh, on YouTube as well. Uh, so, yeah, I'm like OG YouTuber. So, uh, yeah. if you are if you are curious, if you if you can endure more of this voice, if you're if you're ready for more of this, uh, maybe go uh, check out Kelly Blue Books dot com or watch our YouTube videos, uh, YouTube dot com slash KBB or just just KBB. It's really it's like three letters. See, but, right? um, we, I think yeah, we review. Everybody who listens to this podcast has probably heard of Kelly Blue Book. I would hope so. Yeah, and also like maybe an entry point would be my lightning review. If you're curious what I yeah. thought about the Ford Lightning, go check it out on YouTube. And then if you're curious about what um, I do with my helicopter. Um, I've got my own YouTube channel. It's half helicopter stuff and half family car reviews, me, my wife, and daughter. And um, it, really, it's it's me and, and the family doing stuff. Uh, They're good. Helicopters, They're like mostly. Not to, appreciate that. you know, like. Go on. Say th- you know, on. things for the sake of saying them. But like, I watch a lot of car reviews on YouTube and, and, and yours are actually genuinely good. It's also nice to watch reviews and find yourself agreeing with people. Yeah, you know. So, well, and can I say I'm going to offer a pro tip because I feel like every time I have a conversation, like oftentimes there's people in the audience who are like, "Hey, how do I get your job? How do I do what you're doing?" Here's a pro tip: marry a video editor. Oh, <laughs> is that who edits for you? Because that's the worst uh, part of this. <laughs> oh yeah, editing is absolutely the worst. She wasn't editing a video editor sucks. when I. Yeah, yeah, it really does. She wasn't an editor when I married her, but uh, she became one over time. She actually used to edit mm-hmm. Kelly Blue Book videos. Oh, wow. And uh, now she focuses 100% on our channel. And, uh, you know, we've eased into a, a pretty comfortable working relationship. And I'll also add that on our channel, the real joy is doing it as a family, me, my wife, and my mm-hmm. six-year-old yes. daughter. And I've, I have said that if, um, if it were a hundred years ago, we'd have a family deli and we'd all work in the deli and my daughter would be cutting tomatoes in the back and like that kind of thing. But because we live in the modern era, we and have do YouTube- milkshakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so we've got this YouTube channel and we're very proud of it. So, uh, if you're curious what that family looks, if you're curious about a family vehicle and you want it reviewed by an actual family, we are a place you can do that. <laughs> That's exactly it. Noted for imminent reference. I would say Ross, <laughs> Ross is about a month away from uh, creating the same size family. So, oh, is that true? A month and oh. ten days. Month oh, and ten congrats, days. early congrats. That is a, a big <laughs> thing, uh, mostly for me because it means you're going to be a loyal viewer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, spoken like a love. true YouTuber right there. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like and subscribe, everybody. <laughs> yes, there you go. Nailed it. Oh, oh man. Well, That's sweet. Great. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. You can rate and review the show, uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. We put them up there. We're not nearly as good at this as Micah is. You can follow Micah at Micah Musio. <laughs> it's spelled and sounds all one word the way it's supposed to. There's no underscores like Lynn, who has two underscores in the middle of it. And it's uh, she complicates it so much. So uh, <laughs> you can definitely find uh, Micah's channel on YouTube, KBB, everywhere you want. You can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad, and you can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, Everyday Driver, oh and US God. News and World Report. And to be honest, the US News and World Report, like, I've written a bunch of stuff for them, and they'd only posted one. And then, like, in the last week and a half, they posted like four more. And I was like, cool. Thanks, guys. Like, awesome. <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> it's fun shit, though. It Put is. Some cool stuff. Uh, the um, camper trailer one went up, which is nice. my favorite. Okay. I'll, I'll around that one. And, and before we go i would just like to say helicopter is the ultimate overlander it is 
Oh, it is. I will, here, I'm going to make an offer to you guys. If you guys find yourself in California, come hit me up. We'll go do a little overlanding heli style. Oh my gosh. Deal. That would be amazing. And if you find yourself in Northeast, let's go wheeling. Yep. Next time I get married uh, in Avon, Connecticut, I'll hit you up. <laughs> I think that's a callback. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be like 10 minutes from there tomorrow. So uh, if you find yourself there at the same time, things could get weird. This is where I make the joke that you're 10 minutes from anywhere in Connecticut. Oh. <laughs> Dude, my state's just, seven no. hours long. Seven hours. To Dude, get one it's taken me four and a half to get across Connecticut. Yeah, like, that's because of traffic. That's like everything. That's why Micah has a helicopter. Like you guys are on the coach. True. You deal with traffic. Like you think. I just have distance. Yeah and city approval to put a helipad in my backyard maybe i approve of this plan go for it I, I support this gonna, notion i'm not going to tell you no i'm an enabler so uh the rabbit i don't think the rabbits would like it i have to run everything by them the we rabbits. have so many fucking bunnies in the backyard like hmm. i said get a dog but you're about to get a kid so don't do that a dog is next year we did a dog and a kid within a week of each other so <laughs> if, I, if i got a dog right now um I would only have a dog. So. Exactly. So <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's okay. our show. Micah, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having me, guys.